Barbadian Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Guyana's president resolute that he will not step down. Our top story in Caribbean Newsline from Monday, February 4th. From the CMC News Center in Bridgetown, I'm Don Paris. Good evening. Guyana's President David Granger has vowed not to resign despite the December 21st, 2018 no-confidence vote that tumbled his government and a high court ruling that he should call elections. He says his coalition government will remain in office while the motion is appealed right up to the Caribbean Court of Justice. And he's also confident his team will return to the helm whenever the next general elections are held. Last week, the High Court ruled that the vote in the no-confidence motion filed by opposition leader Barrett Jagdil and supported by then-government backbencher Charandas Prasad is valid. Addressing supporters in West Demerara on Sunday, President Granger acknowledged that his administration is faced with a challenging situation. We get more in this Newsroom Guyana report. For President David Granger, it was the first time he was rubbing shoulders at a public meeting with his supporters since his diagnosis with non-Hodgkin lymphoma, a form of cancer. To begin, he thanked all for their prayers. If people then believe that prayers could work, I tell you, prayers could work. But I'm happy to be here. I wish I had a little more hair. <laughs> but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> In displaying a fighting spirit in the face of a no-confidence vote the High Court has since deemed legally passed, the President appeared prepared for the long haul until the match is determined by the Caribbean Court of Justice. And I have not resigned. And according to the Constitution, I remain President till the next President is sworn in. My brothers and sisters, that is a split second event. There is no such thing as interim government. There is no such thing as caretaker government. I remain president yeah. until the next president is sworn in. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know how they can walk the one out. I'm going nowhere. 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 The no confidence vote determines that new elections be held by March 19th, unless the opposition agrees on an extension. Whenever those elections are held, the president is hoping for another win, and he wasted no time in making the appeal for votes. Give us a chance to finish the job, whatever happens. Put us in the driving seat, and you'll see the transformation, you'll see the change. In every community, in every village, in every region. The Chief Justice last Thursday ruled that the President and his government cannot remain in office beyond 90 days of the passage of the no-confidence vote. She refused the conservatory order for a stay in the status quo, meaning that elections are now due in 45 days. Time political scientist Peter Wickham told CMC News that he believes it would have been better for the Granger led administration to go to the polls right after it lost the no confidence vote. President Granger has to go to the election sooner rather than later. I appreciate that he has a need to establish the questions or the, the legitimacy of the questions that are being asked about the Constitution. So, certainly, the court has a role in terms of clarifying. But as far as the politics of the, the situation is concerned, they need to go to an election sooner rather than later and let the people determine one way or the other what they would like to happen. Wickham also expressed the view that the delay in going to the polls has impacted negatively on the ruling coalition. My, my
my feeling is that in light of the vote, I would have hoped that the ruling coalition government would have said, we will go back to the polls, we will be led by President Granger, and we will win. That, to me, would be the appropriate response. Um, what we have had instead was a position that said, well, let's see what the court thinks. Um, my sense is that whether we like it or not, you know, they, they have been they hurt by this. And the slowness to respond and the, the suggestion that you want to retreat to a court position, to me, is, is uh, something that has, has hurt, their, hurt their chances somewhat. So well, let's see what happens in the future if they're able to recover their position. In other news, CARICOM has chastised Secretary General of the Organization of American States, Luis Almagro, for what it said was his unilateral stance in accepting Guan Gu Juan Guaido as Venezuela's interim president. Guaido declared himself de facto leader on January 23rd, deepening the political crisis in the country. He was recognized by several governments, including the United States, as well as Almagro. In a sternly worded letter to the OAS head, the CARICOM chairman, Dr. Timothy Harris of St. Kitts and Nevis, expressed the regional body's disapproval and grave concern with regard to the position that he, in his capacity as Secretary General, has adopted. He told Almagro that his action without the authority of the member states of the organization was inappropriate. Harris wrote, quote, the heads of government consider it imperative that you publicly clarify that you did not speak on behalf of all member states. We are aware this is not the only occasion on which you have made public utterances in the name of the OAS without authority. This type of unilateral action by a head of an international organization whose membership comprises sovereign states is a clear departure from normal practice and cause for great concern." End quote. Meantime, Prime Minister Harris will lead a CARICOM delegation to Uruguay where an international conference focusing on the political upheaval in Venezuela is set to convene on Thursday. The purpose of the conference is to establish the basis for a new dialogue mechanism that includes all the forces in Venezuela in order to help restore peace there. Meantime, Guaido continues to receive backing from Western countries as interim Venezuelan president. France, Spain, Germany, Britain, Portugal, Sweden, Denmark, Austria and the Netherlands have now officially recognized him after President Nicolas Maduro rejected the deadline they'd set for Sunday to call fresh polls. And they've now urged Guaido to hold free and fair elections as soon as possible. Maduro has said he is considering revising relations with those countries that have decided not to recognize him. Police in Jamaica are investigating the shocking murder of an opposition parliamentarian. The body of Portland Eastern MP Dr. Linville Bloomfield, Bloomfield was found in his home over the weekend. The legislator had stab wounds and a blunt blood-stained instrument was also found on the scene. The discovery on Saturday has triggered calls for whoever is responsible for his death to be quickly brought to justice. There have also been outpouring of support, condolences and tributes on social media, including from opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips. Saddened, as is the entire party, indeed the country, by the news of the tragic killing of the Member of Parliament for East Portland, Dr. Linval Bloomfield. He is a vibrant Jamaican medical doctor who gave tremendous service to the people of his community over many, many years. Those words from the opposition leader and in a release today, Prime Minister Andrew Holness also extended condolences to family and friends and expressed shock at Dr. Bloomfield's killing. Mr. Holness said despite being on the other side of the aisle, he knew of Dr. Bloomfield's love for his constituents and Jamaica. Opposition leader Dr. Peter Phillips wants those responsible to pay. To have been attacked in this way really is a sad statement of the state of affairs in our country. I would really hope that the police spare no effort to identify those responsible 
and let them feel the weight of justice. In the meantime, the Prime Minister said he has received a preliminary report from the police who have assured him that they have mobilized a high-powered team of investigators to determine the circumstances of Dr. Bloomfield's death. And on the same day the MP was discovered dead, the decomposed body of a 65-year-old attorney who had been reported missing since January 6 was found in the western parish of St. James. William Hines' body with hands and feet bound was removed from a sinkhole on his cattle farm. It's reported that family members identified items of clothing belonging to the attorney as well as a burnt briefcase. So far, the police have not yet determined a motive behind the suspected murder. Coming up in Caribbean Newsline, more than two dozen Haitians drown in Bahamas waters. Stay with us. Dancehall artist Spice is offering one million Jamaican dollars to anyone who has proof that she initiated beef with the angel. Spice announced the giveaway on her Instagram via an Instagram Live as her aim was to clear the air where both artists are concerned. The black hypocrisy singer said she has no beef with any female artist, including Lady Saw, whose fans have said she, Spice, wanted to take Saw's place as the queen of dancehall. Welcome to the WWG 2019 War with Germs. The Oxytech Antimicrobial Glove is wasting no time, folks. Quite right, Tammy. I see no way for the Germs duel to come from this. Oh, what a slam. What a slam. Oxytech is the winner in less than a minute. WWG Champion of the World. Find our champion at www.psci.biz or give us a call at 417-0777. Welcome back. The U.S. Embassy in Haiti is warning residents not to risk their lives by making dangerous voyages to, at sea to reach the Bahamas and other neighboring islands. The warning came after at least 28 Haitians drowned when the ship in which they were traveling sunk off the Bahamian island of Abaco on Saturday. The tragedy occurred when the ship, which had traveled from the French-speaking CARICOM nation, sunk near Falky off the coast of Marsh Harbor, Abaco. 17 survivors were pulled from the waters. On Saturday, a joint mission between the Royal Bahamian Defense Force and the U.S. Coast Guard initially rescued 15 survivors and pulled 13 bodies ashore. On Sunday, two more survivors were found alive in a nearby key, in addition to 15 bodies in the sunken vessel. The Royal Bahamas Defense Force says that so far this year, 300 Haitians have been apprehended for attempting to enter the Bahamas illegally in four separate incidents. In this week's Newsline Health, there's a focus on cancer in keeping with Monday's observance of World Cancer Day. In the Caribbean and Latin America, cervical cancer is the third most common form of the disease among women, but regional health officials say it can be prevented. We get more in this report. The Pan American Health Organization says each year an estimated 56,000 women in Latin America and the Caribbean are diagnosed with cervical cancer, and more than half of them die from the disease. The chief of PAHO's Non Communicable Diseases Unit, Silvana Luciani, says it is unacceptable that women today are dying from a disease that can largely be prevented. Cervical cancer can be prevented through vaccination against human papillomavirus or HPV. PAHO is also recommending that this vaccine be administered to girls aged 19 to 14 years. Cervical cancer is caused by infection with what we call human papilloma virus. You can get it fairly early and often we say young girls who have not had sexual dating are the only people who do not get cervical cancer. But 
if you have a sexual uh, activity, you are most likely to be infected with human papillomavirus. Most women are able to clear the original infection, but if you get uh, the kind of human papillomavirus infection, type 16 or type 18, you are most likely to get uh, advanced cervical cancer. In the Americas, cancer is the overall leading cause of death. Last year, there were 3.9 million new cases and 1.3 million cancer deaths. The highest cancer rates in the Caribbean have been recorded in Barbados, Cuba, Jamaica, and Puerto Rico. And mortality rates are highest in Barbados, Cuba, the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, Haiti, Trinidad and Tobago, and Suriname. The most common cancers among women are breast, lung, colorectal, thyroid, and cervical. In men, the most prevalent forms of the disease are prostate, lung, colorectal, bladder, and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Cancer can be prevented through the reduced use of tobacco, diets high in fruits and vegetables and low in red and processed meats, reduced alcohol consumption, increased physical activity, and reduced exposure to carcinogens in the workplace as well as vaccinations. 30% of cancers can be cured if they are detected early. World Cancer Day was observed this year under the theme, I can and I will. Marie Claire Williams, Newsline Health. Ahead in Newsline Sport, the West Indies win the Test Series against England, but the captain is penalized. We'll tell you why after the break. Second annual St. Kitts Music Festival from June 27 to July 1st, 2018, featuring Kesta Band, Simba Lodgy, Small X Band, Nyla Blackman, and Betty Wack. Also, Patti LaBelle, Dijon, New Vibes International, Rhythm of the Beat, and Wayne Wonder. Fight, August Alpina, Aishana, Byron Messiah, Dasha. Save the date and book now for the 22nd and most in Kids Music Festival and experience like no other. Welcome to Funhouse Visual Media, Care Vision's new digital video production and corporate communication division, your one-stop shop for creative marketing solutions. Trust our experienced team to work with you to determine the best strategies to suit your goals and budget. Our aim is to provide you with the best product conveying your company's message. Contact us at production at airvision.tv about our special production and advertising packages. Your message will be seen on all of our international distribution platforms. Care Vision and Funhouse Visual Media, one stop for creative marketing and advertising solutions. Barbados, renowned for its pristine beachfront and fantastic weather, continues to leave quite an impression on newcomers to the island and returning visitors. The Caribbean island, quite popular as a vacation hotspot, is not only beautiful due to its natural aesthetics, the island of Barbados continues to grow in popularity because of unique connections developed with our people, our culture. We can't wait to welcome you. Sports now, West Indies crushed England by 10 wickets inside three days of the second test on Saturday to regain the Wisden Trophy with a match to spare in the three-test series. The series win marked the first time in a decade that Twin Indies have won the coveted trophy and also the Caribbean side's first series win over a higher-ranked side in seven years. West Indies resumed the day on 272 for six and were bowled out for 306 to earn a first innings lead of 119. England then folded quickly after being 35 without loss. From that moment of 35 for none, it became 35 for one when Burns tried to cut one that was far too close. And he guided it into the hands of Slip. And then the collapse began. Johnny Bairstow bowled yet again 29 times in international cricket, more than anyone else this decade, showing his off stump. And they found his off stump. Good review by Holder. Look at Holder running towards the umpire. He heard something. 
and he was backed up by the review system exploded from a length that's twice Joe Root got deliveries that exploded in the game Joe Denley he seemed to play loads of shots he got 17 hit the top of Austin just keep it round about there Young fella special day for him Stokes, how can it happen? Despair for England supporters, despair for Stokes. Drag on. Owen oh, Alley wasn't there long. Yeah, Roach found his straps right now, actually bowling at left handers. And then the big in-swinger, again, under review. And again, Holder getting it spot on. Big, booming in-swinger going on to hit. Leg stump. Folks batting with a bruised hand. He played pretty well until that moment. This a key wicket. Butler can hurt you. He was playing well. He was the top scorer for England in that innings. <laughs> Look at the dance there. Knew that he had a key man. Back got trapped, hit the back leg, just a bail trimmer. Stuart Broad going back and across, not much doubt. Crashing into the stumps. And Jimmy Anderson bemused. Job done. Well, Wendy's captain Jason Holder has paid the price for his team's slow over rate in that second test. The International Cricket Council has banned him from playing in the third and final test. Holder had claimed four for 32 to help bowl England out for 132. It's the second time he's been punished for his team's slow over rate. The West Indies skipper missed the second test in New Zealand in December 2017 after also being banned for such an offence. The 27-year-old holder is the leading run scorer in the series with 229 runs at an average of 114.5 and has also taken seven wickets at an average of 17. Vice Captain Craig Brathwaite is expected to lead the West Indies in his absence. The third test will bowl off on Sunday in St. Lucia. Meanwhile, Test legend, legend Shane Warne has led a chorus of international criticism of the ICC's one-match ban on Holder. The all-time wicket-taker in Test tweeted, The Test didn't go three days. Can you please appeal this, Jason Holder? What a ridiculous decision. Where's the common sense here? P.S. Congrats on a wonderful series win too. International cricket needs a strong Wendy's team and hopefully this is just the start. He added, the fans at the ground saw some awesome cricket from you and your team. No one at the ground would have felt shortchanged whatsoever. What a ridiculous decision and I hope this will be overturned. Former England captain Michael Vaughan also slammed the ICC's decision arguing that the fact that the match lasted less than three days made the overrate breach irrelevant. He said, quote, For a game that finished inside three days, I find this absolutely bonkers, end quote. Prominent commentator Mike Hainsman, meanwhile, called for a review of the controversial ICC rule. He stated, quote, So this situation is totally wrong. The ICC needs to seriously look at this deal. It makes no sense to suspend leaders who excel inside the stipulated five days. Just makes no sense to rob the team of a captain like this. Review please now, end quote. And another former England captain, Mike Atherton, who's covering the three test series as a pundit for Sky Sports, called the ban ridiculous. He said, quote, it seems ridiculous to me that the game England can't extend beyond the third day. You have a captain banned for slow over rates, end quote. The ICC said Holder did not contest the charge and as a result, no formal hearing was needed. Holder as captain was fined 40% of his match fee, double that of his players and slapped with the ban as the breach was the second for the Windies in the last 12 months. 
And before we go, West Indies' resounding 10-wicket victory over England has been dedicated to the deceased mother of fast bowler Alzari Joseph. Captain Jason Holder said when the team heard the news that Sharon Joseph had died on Saturday, everyone rallied around Alzari and offered their support. Speaking to ABS-TV before the conclusion of the match, Alzari's father reflected on the passing of the cricketer's mother. Alzari Joseph delivers an unplayable beauty to England's captain Joe Root. It was one of his two wickets on day one of the second test between West Indies and England at Sir Vivian Richards Stadium. 48 hours later, news broke that Joseph's mother, Sharon Joseph, had died. A day before her death, we caught up with his father, Alva Joseph, taking in the action on day two of that test match. His mother was always there supporting him along with myself. Unfortunately, his mother is sick now, so he, she, she, that, is, that may be the, the, the sad point for me. She's not here to see him performing at the high, highest level, which would have been a real joy for her. Sharon was Alzawi's biggest fan all through his career. I remember at one time when he just started playing, he had to leave the tour and come home when she got sick. She have seen him play from, from, from maybe around 9, 10 up to... When he was 16, uh, then she, she took sick and she's just not, I don't know, she just, she, she, it's unfortunate, but not something I'm very happy talking about. The England cricket team on the morning of the third day wore black armbands in respect. The 22-year-old opted to continue playing the match and fans at the Sir Vivian Richard Stadium showed their appreciation with a rousing applause for the young fast bowler as he took the field for the first time since his mother's passing. His father has one wish though. And I told him he need to, he's home, he need to bowl his team to victory, he probably picked up a career best, a fiver, you know, that would be happy for me. And that's the sport, we'll be right back. Dancehall artist Spice is offering one million Jamaican dollars to anyone who has proof that she initiated beef with the angel. Spice announced the giveaway on her Instagram via an Instagram Live as the aim was to clear the air where both artists are concerned. The black hypocrisy singer said she has no beef with any female artist, including Lady Saw, whose fans have said she, Spice, wanted to take Saw's place as the queen of dancehall. Welcome to the WWG 2019 War with Germs. The Oxytec antimicrobial glove is wasting no time, folks. Quite right, Tammy. I see no way for the Germs duel to come from this. Oh, what a slam. What a slam. Oxytec is the winner in less than a minute. WWG champion of the world. Find our champion at www.psci.biz or give us a call at 417-0777. Again, the major developments of this day, Guyana's President David Granger vows not to resign despite the December 21st, 2018 vote of confidence that of no confidence that tumbled his government and a high court ruling that he should call elections. And in sport, the West Indies win the test series against England, but Captain Jason Holder is banned from playing in the third and final test because of his size slow over rate in the Antigua match. That's Caribbean Newsline for news and sport around the clock. Subscribe to Connornews.com. For more of our programming, log on to carevision.tv and check out our YouTube channel. We'll be back here again tomorrow. But from all of us at CNC News, thank you for watching and have yourselves a good night.